Welcome back to Probability, Logic, and Beyond. In this video, we'll go over three very useful discrete probability distributions, namely the uniform distribution, the binomial distribution, and the Poisson distribution. A uniform random variable is a random variable such that the probability of each element in the set is equal to 1 over the total number of elements in the discrete set. The expected value and variance of a discrete distribution can be computed using the familiar E of X and V of X formulae. In many questions, it is common to say that the uniform distribution spans some range of integers evenly. For example, when you roll a dice from 1 to 6, the uniform distribution spans the integers from 1 to 6. Another problem might say that the distribution spans the integers from 5 to 12. In cases like these, we can take shortcuts to compute useful information about the distribution. To compute the expected value of the distribution, for example, we don't need to fully expand the formula for the expected value. Instead, we can just take the average of the bounds of the distribution by computing a plus b over 2, or in this case, 5 plus 12 over 2 equals 8.5. In the dice example, we could expand the formula for the expected value to get 1 times 1 over 6, plus 2 times 1 over 6, and so on. Or, we could just take the average of the bounds to compute the expected value much quicker. Another useful trick is we can compute the probability of a certain range of values on the uniform distribution by taking the ratio of the discrete range to the total length of the distribution. In the 5 to 12 distribution example, we might be curious about the probability of drawing a number greater than 7. We could compute this probability by taking the sum of each of the individual outcomes and dividing that number by the total number of outcomes. Alternatively, we could compute the probability of drawing a number greater than 7 by taking the ratio of the length of 7 to 12 to the length of 5 to 12, which gives 6 over 8. We can compute the probability of any range in the same way by computing d minus c plus 1 over b minus a plus 1. To summarize, the probability of getting any outcome in a uniform distribution is equal to 1 over the total number of outcomes. The expected value and variance of the distribution can be computed normally, or we can use the bounds trick to calculate the expected value more efficiently. Finally, we can compute probabilities of ranges on a uniform distribution by taking the ratio of the range to the total length of the distribution. Now let's move on to the binomial distribution. A binomial random variable governs the probability of getting k successes from n Bernoulli experiments. From a previous video, we gained a better intuition for the binomial distribution formula. We can use this equation to solve questions like, what's the probability of getting exactly three heads when flipping a total of 10 coins? Importantly, this means the probability of getting three heads in any order. So the first three could be heads, the last three, or any permutation of three heads and seven tails. If we fix the number of experiments at 10, and we consider a fair coin with p equals 0.5, we can actually visualize the probability of getting exactly 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10 heads by plotting the probability as a function of the success count. You can calculate each of the values in this distribution yourself by simply plugging in a p-value of 0.5, an n-value of 10, and each k-value in the distribution into the binomial distribution formula. Each value on the x-axis represents the probability of getting a total number of k successes through 10 trials, with a probability of success of 0.5. A very useful property about the binomial distribution with a p-value of 0.5 is it is symmetric around n over 2. So if you know the probability of k equals 4, then you also know the probability of k equals 6, and so on. Let's see what happens as we modify the probability of success, p. If we lower the p-value to 0.25, meaning the probability of getting a success is half as likely, we can see that our distribution skews towards having fewer successes. Notice that the shape of the distribution remains normal. Conversely, if we change the p-value to 0.75, we can see that the distribution heavily skews to having more successes. If we elongate the number of trials n to something like 20, we can see the same normal looking distribution, just a bit wider. With respect to the mean and variance, the expected value is equal to n times p, and the variance is equal to n times p times 1 minus p. 
The binomial distribution answers questions about the likelihood of getting a certain number of successes or failures in fixed time Bernoulli experiments. It helps us answer questions where we know how many experiments will happen and the probability of a success or failure. Oftentimes we need to compute the probability of events happening in real time. For example, we might be told that there are three successes happening every minute and we want to know the probability of getting at least one success in the next hour. For questions like this, we need to rely on the Poisson distribution, which governs the total probability of receiving k successes during a time horizon tau for an arrival rate lambda. To visualize the shape of the distribution, let's set the arrival rate lambda to three successes per unit time, and the tau value, which is the total time horizon we're considering, to one unit. Then, we can plot the distribution of probability values as a function of k. You can generate the same distribution by setting lambda to 3 and tau to 1, and then computing each k value in the distribution. Immediately, we can see that the curve looks like a negative exponential. For an arrival rate of 3 successes per unit time, we can see that the most likely outcomes are that after 1 unit of time, 2 to 3 successes will most likely occur, and there is a less than 1% chance that 9 successes occur. If we decrease the arrival rate to 1 success per unit time, we can see that the distribution skews even more towards 0, with the most likely outcomes becoming 0 and 1 successes in 1 unit of time. If we increase the arrival rate to 6, we notice the opposite effect. Now there is less than a 1% chance that no successes occur in 1 unit of time, and a 7% chance of 9 successes occurring. So far, we've only altered the lambda value. We can also adjust the tau value. This is the time period we're considering. The current distribution shows the probability of k successes occurring during one time period. If we increase tau to 2, we see the probability distribution of k successes occurring during two time periods. Now that we have an appreciation for the shape of the Poisson distribution, let's quickly touch on its mean invariance. Interestingly, the mean invariance of the Poisson distribution are the same and are equal to lambda tau. You could therefore easily determine the average number of successes that will occur and the next tau time units by computing lambda tau. In this video, we learned about the uniform distribution and how to utilize simple tricks to calculate useful information about discrete uniform distributions spanning fixed intervals. We also brushed up on binomial distributions, which govern the probability of getting k successes through n Bernoulli trials and Poisson distributions, which determine the probability of getting k successes during a time horizon tau and an arrival rate lambda. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to the channel for more content on probability, logic, and beyond.